eight NBA players ready to become superstars, or at least to have a breakout season and head in that direction. So we're looking at guys today who have shown all the signs that this year is going to be a huge one for them and are in the right position to make it happen. Players that are set to have the best years of their careers and turn a lot of heads. Of course, I'm not mentioning every single potential breakout player, but these are the ones I'm expecting the most from. And with that, of course, we have some honorable mentions like DeAndre Hunter and Cam Reddish. They have the potential to be breakout stars, to have great seasons now that they're accustomed to being in the league. And I'd believe it if it happened, but I wouldn't bet on it based on how many players the Hawks have brought in for this year. Malik Beasley is another honorable mention because a lot of people were bringing him up for averaging over 20 points a game after getting traded to the Timberwolves last season. But that doesn't always translate long term, plus with Anthony Edwards joining the team and all of his many off-court issues, it could affect them. Then finally, before this honorable mention list gets too long, I wanted to at least mention LaMelo Ball and Cole Anthony. Honorable mentions because they're both rookies, but there were doubts about how both men would translate to the NBA, and now they're looking like they're headed towards success. If LaMelo can fix the weaknesses in his game, and I'm still on edge whether Cole's going to be an Austin Rivers or a future All-Star, but there's still hope, and that's why one day I'd say both of these men could be real stars. But alright, now onto the real list. With number one in Michael Porter Jr. He had an okay official rookie season, but actually looked like a real star in the bubble. That is, until the playoffs started, where he had moments of greatness, but was way too inconsistent and had to be taken out of games at times because of his defense. And it's fine because it was his first year. I feel like this next one's going to be huge for him though. Inconsistency often comes with a lack of experience, but now that he has more of that, he should play a lot better a lot more often, especially since Jeremy Grant left to the Pistons. It looks like there may still be a bit of a problem though with his play time because Will Barton's saying that he has no plans of coming off the bench to allow MPJ to start and obviously that's the wrong move. Barton's a good scorer but he'd be a better six man and Porter just needs the starting spot. He's one of the future pieces of the team. Honestly if I'm the Nuggets and that continues to be a problem I'd just rather trade Will Barton. Either way though if MPJ has worked on his defense and gets big minutes and even eventually does end up starting expect big things from him because I mean in only 16 minutes a game last year he averaged 10 points a game on 50% from the field and a very efficient 42% from three. Then for number two we have Bull Bull and I was going to include him with Porter but he really deserves his own spot in this video because for as much potential he has and has shown in the very little we've seen from him as well as Jeremy Grant and Mason Plumlee leaving the team that leaves a lot more playing time for Bull Bull which he got none of having only played seven games in useless minutes last year which is somehow going to make this his official rookie year. So he does have a chance at the rookie of the year award. Now the Nuggets have said to have been very impressed with Bull in those first games in the bubble and in Denver's practices since then, which is a good sign. And he should be getting more minutes behind either Millsap or Jokic. But if he really wants to have a breakout season this year, he's going to have to break into the starting lineup and take either Will Barton or Millsap's spot. My hopes for this team is that by the end of this season, they have Murray, Harris, Porter Jr., Bull Bull, and Jokic as their starters. But I know that's a stretch. I do think it's what needs to happen though. If not, I at least want to see one of Bull or Porter starting and breaking out. And if need where those happens, that's really on the Nuggets. Number three, Zion Williamson. I get people are tired of hearing about Zion at this point and how great he is considering he's barely played any games, but I don't think these conversations will be able to happen after this season. We all know Zion has superstar potential, but I think he really proves it this year. I don't have any exact numbers I think he'll put up, but he definitely will be better than last year, and expect him to be the co-star of the Pelicans alongside Brandon Ingram. This really is a big year for him, because imagine if he comes out and isn't able to average at least 20 a game and isn't able to consistently be good. It would be pretty disappointing, but combined with his size, strength, athleticism, and the fact that he has still stayed healthy, I have no doubts that Zion will approach an all-star level this season and put him headed towards the right track for the rest of his career. Number four, Kobe White. It was already clear last year that Kobe was the Bulls' best point guard, even though he was coming off the bench. He averaged 13 points and three assists a game, but over the last 14 games of the season, he averaged 21 and five, including three straight games with 30 plus, where for two of them he came off the bench. So now with Chris Dunn in Atlanta and the Bulls having a new coach in Billy Donovan, White's got the starting spot locked in. So if you combine all of that with how much better he's looked through the preseason, and I think it's a no-brainer that Kobe White is going to have a breakout year this year because he's shown that he's got huge potential as a scorer and a playmaker. And luckily for Chicago, that's exactly what this team needed. I mean, still don't expect them to be great or anything, but this is definitely a good sign towards their future. I really didn't expect much from 
from Kobe after he was drafted, but it's good to see now that he's proven that he's going to be a real threat in the league. Number five, Christian Wood. Wood's been one of the most talked about players that really looks like he's headed towards a breakout season this year. After he averaged 24 and 10 over the Pistons last 10 games in 2020 and 27 and 10 over their last five games. Well, in his one preseason game for Houston, he looked unstoppable, putting up 27 and 10 in just 24 minutes, running the floor, dominating in the paint and shooting threes. Sure, it was preseason, but it's also a good sign that he's picking up from right where he left off. He wasn't able to play like this for most of last year, playing with Andre Drummond, but as soon as he got traded, Christian started to break out. And hey, if Christian really starts to play good, maybe Harden should reconsider that trade request. Then for number six, we have Colin Sexton, who led the Cavs in scoring all year last year. And as a sophomore, he averaged 21 points and three assists a game. In terms of young talent, he's definitely leading the way for Cleveland. And after the signs that he showed last year, I expect him to be even better now. If he ever wants to be taken as a serious threat or a contender to make an all-star team though, he's got to be a better facilitator and a playmaker. His three assists a game for the past two seasons won't and can't cut it as a starting point guard. It's hard to say what will happen for sure with him, but developing into a playmaker is the direction I hope he goes in this year. And if he can put up more points and average somewhere around seven assists a night, I think he'll be a great overall player. Right now he's a good player, but if he starts to get his teammates involved, that's when they'll start to get wins and when he'll become a great player. And now's a good time to start because the Cavs have quietly compiled a decent amount of talent on their team. Number 7, DeAndre Aiden. I've said this recently, so I'll keep it short. DeAndre Aiden will break out this year. I don't think he's going to approach that superstar level yet, but he's going to at least be a near all-star. He's got all the tools, the potential, the teammates. Now it's just up to him to execute. I'll be disappointed if he comes out averaging anything less than 22 and 12 this year. Sure, he's got a lot of new teammates. It'll probably be a new system, but it's his third year in the league, so he should be able to make the adjustments. We know what Chris will bring. We know what Devin will bring. I think DeAndre is one of the wild cards here, which will really determine just how good this team is. And finally, number eight, we have Markel Fultz. And I've recently said in my 10 players, it's time to give up on video that I believe Markel Fultz will never become that superstar player he was expected to when he was drafted first overall. And nothing's changed with that. But that doesn't mean he can't have a good breakout year in 2021. I mean, listen, just because he won't be a superstar doesn't mean he's just going to be a bad player for the rest of his career. Now, last year, DJ Augustine got a lot of minutes for Orlando, but now that he's in Milwaukee and the only other point guard Fultz will be sharing playing time with is a rookie Cole Anthony, it gives him a lot of new opportunity. So that on top of the fact that Markel's had another year towards recovery and to work on his shot, I think he'll take a step in the right direction. He's already got a sharp mid-range game and has shown flashes of great athleticism. So I'd expect him to come out this year shooting better and attempting to make a lot more plays for his teammates. And if he does all that, he'll have a breakout year and the best of his career so far. Then all of a sudden, the Magic are looking like they're finally headed in the right direction too. Now, if I miss any players that look like they're on the verge of a breakout career, comment them down below and let me know. If not, drop a like on the video if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I'll catch you next time.